What's up, people? Doing my wife's brakes today. I got something else to show you here. This is from the Trans Depot. Right there is a 204R trans to go in the truck. It's got a torque converter included. I think you can see that. And it needs to go in the truck soon because I don't have reverse. And that's why I'm parking like this. I'm parking like this so that I can roll out. <laughs> It'll be a 204R conversion, so it'll have overdrive, which means it'll cruise a little bit easier on the street, or on the highway anyway. And <laughs> assuming I solve all these other problems, that should be a pretty nice ride. I don't know when I'm going to get to that. A uh, little concerned about accessing the garage here and being able to do that in a day. I've heard some people say, oh yeah, you can have the trans in and out in an hour. Not usually the way I work. <laughs> It usually takes me a little bit more time because I'm figuring stuff out as I go. So we'll see if um, if I can do that or not. So you can see here that I've used these trip these uh these these zip ties to tie it down here. So everything on this brake job is pretty straightforward except these dumb little things. These little retainer clips, I don't know what they call them. Every OEM brake caliper has something like this. These are the most complex I've ever seen. They've just like I can't even imagine what the forming die looks like to stamp these stupid things. But these parts right here are the springs that essentially, for, uh, from what I can tell, they want to push they want to push the pad toward the rotor. It's a fun morning. Uh, <laughs> I went to the auto parts store, which is about eight blocks from here, to get different pads and retainer clips and some brake quiet stuff and I took the C10 and it's it quit on me in the middle of the road and I had to push it to the side of the road and it won't start and my only guess is since I've never driven it like this in the rain before is that it probably has some water and condensation inside the distributor cap and it won't spark and therefore it won't fire it'll turn over Looks like it's trying to give it fuel. So it's a few blocks away, sitting on the side of the road right now. I think I've got it parked in a spot where I'll be okay for a while. I'm gonna finish the wife's car, and when the rain stops, if it dries out a little bit, I'll try to go get the truck and see if I can have a little less drama today. It'd be nice. And the trick is here is I've taken the whole carrier off and that's what I've zip tied to the spring so I have to be careful that this caliper doesn't fall off while I'm fiddling around but this is going to make it so much easier to do the uh, pads because now all I have access to everything I can go inside backside and you don't have to mess around with the uh, trying to squeeze the brackets in there so I'm going to put some of this stuff on here this is disc brake quiet this will go on the back of the pads. So 
So here's how these work. You, you got this, this carrier thing, and you can see that uh, this part slides, and it's got this little grease boot around it. So that slides back and forth as the as the caliper moves to 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 clamp down on your rotors, and then these little carrier clips, retainer clips, abutment clips, whatever you want to call them, sit right in there. And this is so much easier with this off of the caliper, like way freaking easier. Um, and then you put this, like that. That's good. And then this guy with the little tab on him goes in the rear. Do that. And if it does bend out, try to shove it back in there. So I'm going to show you something pretty awesome. I just discovered that the Acadia already has a receiver built into it. It's a full-size receiver that I didn't even know was there. And there's this little attachment in the back of the bumper. You just take it off. It's a panel. And it exposes the receiver hitch. So the truck is stranded a few blocks over. And my son and I just went to a Volkswagen show. And I thought I'd stop by the truck on the way back. The rain has cleared up a little bit. And I wanted to see if I could maybe get her started and I go to start it and it's just it's, it turns over but it won't it won't catch and so I thought maybe there's water in the distributor turns out there's no fuel in the fuel line that glass fuel filter that goes before the carb has nothing in it and sure enough when I spray carb cleaner into it uh, it'll catch and, and try to ignite and it turns over a couple revolutions and then it's done because it's fuel starved so what the heck? I mean, I already put a fuel pump in it. You saw in the last video that I did a few months ago, I put a fuel pump in it. Why would it be having this problem now? So there's some good news. I already have a means to tow this because I built this system to tow cars. I towed the Impala into this garage like eight years ago with this. Uh, I didn't know how to attach around the bumper, so I built this generic adapter, this wood adapter that just will sit on the bumper with recessed screws so they don't scratch the bumper. And it's designed to go on the bumper like this, and I'll do that with ratchet straps. And then I've got these attachments here that allow me to bumper tow. I can bumper tow, they allow me to bumper tow like this. So I've got this attachment that goes here and attaches to these. You can't see it on the camera, but it attaches to there and then I can bumper tow the truck home. So I'm gonna do that and at least park it in front of the house. Wish I could leave it there for the next few days. And if I have to put a new mechanical fuel pump in it again, I will. So here's where we are. This is stalled out and it appears that there's no fuel here. And so there is going to be a temporary fix to run the engine off of the gas can. Harley, Harley ate whole, all of his vitamins. That's good. Thanks. So I put the inlet line from the fuel tank into the mechanical fuel pump and I'm going to see if I can start the engine by pumping fuel out of here. When I disconnected that line, it uh, definitely was dry. <laughs> there was no fuel in it at all. So we'll see if this works. And it's been a challenging couple days for the muscle truck. broke down on me yesterday in the rain and I thought I had water in the distributor cap and that was not the case so we're going to 
try this. Pretty surprised to see how rapidly the mechanical pump took the fuel um, from the temporary fuel tank. That was cool. So at least I know what the problem is now and I feel much better about it. Um, I got two major problems with the truck though right now and that's this fuel problem and then the transmission and lack of reverse. But one thing at a time, I think uh, and I've been dealing with the lack of reverse for a while, so I can continue doing that as long as the trans just holds together. So that's the end of this story for now.